Harmony Liu for Ask Congress TV. Today, I'm going to be interviewing Jennifer Hurt. She is a professor of Christian ethics at the Yale University Divinity School. She has published a lot on virtue ethics, early modern and modern moral thought and um, political theology. Uh, here is the interview. So along the way, I, I uh, uh, added another major in religion because I thought, well, I have space in my schedule. I, I don't have to just do biology, so I'll have a double major and I'll be able to keep thinking about these big questions. So, you know, things went along and then I had a summer job working in a uh, biotechnology lab, which seemed like you know, the ideal thing for my biology career. And it was okay, but it wasn't particularly interesting to me. I, I spent a lot of time pipetting bells from one, you know, from one flask into another flask and worrying about how my tissue culture had gone bad. And, uh, I, you know, I thought, well, you know, if I continue on in this, if I become quite successful, then I'll spend my time writing, writing grant proposals. And um, before that, I'll spend a lot of time pipetting in labs. So I, I wasn't sure that that's really what I wanted. When it got close to the graduation from college time, I thought, you know, there are a few lucky people who get to spend their lives reading and writing and talking about the things that I'm really passionate about. So why don't I just give it a try? Why don't I just apply to a few doctoral programs, a few of the very best programs, and, and just see what happens with my application? And um, that, you know, that really was what, what did it. I was accepted into these programs and uh, went off to graduate school and really never, never looked back. I mean, I really have been extremely fortunate in my career to be able to do what I really love to do. That's, I mean, I'm, I'm about to enter my senior year of high school. So I'm also starting to like, what should I major in? What should I do when I grow up? So that's actually like really helpful for me personally too. Yeah. So not so stressful. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, every, you know, every experience that you have, you learn, whether it's good or bad, you just want to reflect on it. And what do you learn about yourself from it, right? What you enjoy, what really, what really excites you and what you're good at, right? You also want to be, you want to be feeling like you're, 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 you're flourishing in what you're doing. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, next question would be, um, so religion and philosophy are very complex topics and many people would have different viewpoints on it. So I wanted to know how you would navigate this field when it involves uh, so much questioning and encountering many different people with different uh, opinions than you. Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. So it's certainly the case that I'm in a field where there aren't clear factual answers to questions. Uh, and. So some people just don't enjoy that field because they really want to have black and white answers to things. Uh, but that's part of what attracted me to it was that there's, there's space to keep reflecting and that there are a lot of different ways one can think about these questions. And fundamentally, I think it's really a matter of, of, of uh, approaching everyone and everyone's um, convictions in a respectful way understanding that we're all shaped by the context that we inhabit, the relationships that we've had. And those are of course gonna have a really fundamental impact on what we believe about some of these questions where we can't just run an experiment and get an answer. Uh, and I think if you approach, um, approach other people with that, that openness and that curiosity and that respect, then what you find is, first of all, you learn a lot about them. You also learn a lot about yourself it clarifies your own convictions when you hear how others think about things. And I, I, I think I got a, a lot of practice at this way of thinking because of the way that I grew up, because I, I grew up in, in overseas um, in the Philippines. My family was living in an international scientific community, people who were working in rice research. Um, so I had friends from all, of, all over the world who had very different religious backgrounds, Hindus and Muslims and Buddhists and atheists and 
you know, all, all just all sorts of backgrounds. And we really enjoyed actually talking about these things. I think sometimes adults are more hesitant. They, they think, oh, I, I don't want to say the wrong thing. So I better not, better not say anything at all. But as kids, we were not so reluctant. Uh, and so it was a really wonderful opportunity. Do you find that like, um, you sometimes find that like your opinion like, or your opinion is changed by others or th things like that? Have you like learned a lot to like accept different viewpoints? Well, yes and no. I mean, I think more often I have the experience of appreciating my own tradition more deeply but also not not just because I think oh they're wrong and I'm right but I but I see deep deep um, resonances with the way that other traditions might might think about a question um, but I think where I certainly have grown from where I started as a child I mean there was a time when I thought well if people don't agree with me they're going to hell and I I don't have any such view now um, and that, of course, is much easier. I think if if you if you do think that, it's going to be much harder to approach other people with a, you know, with an open mind. Yeah. And uh, lastly, um, I wanted to talk about the recent uh, shooting at Robb Elementary School in Texas. Um, so many of my teachers brought up this event in class, and they spent some time to talk about it. So I was wondering. Um, how would you address this event or like issues like this event in like one of your classes and like how would you relate it to what you teach? Yeah, well, I'm glad your teachers did bring it up because I think when when there's something when something like that happens, it's on everybody's mind. And so it's better to bring it out into the open and not be just hiding it inside. My my students are primar primarily graduate students, so they're at a bit of a different point in life. Um, but fundamentally, I do try to open up space in my classroom when there is a, a horrible tragedy or um, some of the ra recent racially motivated killings, things like that. I do try to um, open up space to discuss that with my students, um, and and the. First and foremost, I want them to feel that we are a community that's caring and supportive of one another. So different things are traumatizing for different people, but I want to make sure that everybody, every student in the class is feeling, feeling supported. That can be tricky because sometimes there's a, an event that takes place and it doesn't get a lot of media attention, but it's affecting somebody very deeply. So it, it's not easy to, it's not easy to know exactly which things to discuss in that way and which not to discuss in that way. And, and also it's the case that sometimes there's a sort of a media frenzy about uh, something. And sometimes what students need is a, is a space to step back from that for a while and focus on something else. So there's no easy answer here, I think. It's, it's really a matter of kind of judgment. And the, the better that I know my students, that better I'm able to respond appropriately to them. But then the other thing that I would say, and maybe this is a little bit different in, in my context than it would be say in a high, high school classroom is, I think it's part, partly my responsibility to move beyond simplified portrayals of an issue. And right now in our society, we're seeing very polarized responses to all sorts of things. Um, and I would hope that the university classroom can be a space where we, we don't see it in such a polarized way. And we can try to understand what, what is it that is leading people to see an issue in one way. Is, you know, some people look at the Rob Elementary shooting and they think it's a mental health issue or it's an issue about school security, or it's an issue about the First and Second Amendment, or it's an issue about um, not enough gun, gun control, easy access to firearms. Uh, these are all, all of them in some way, um, an efforts to simplify a very complex set of issues so that we can come to terms with it in some way and keep going. Um, so we need space to, 
you know, hardly just grapple emotionally with just horrible, horrible loss. And so then we also need space to think about the issues in a complex way that is not so polarizing. Yeah, thank you. Um, that's all the questions that I have for you. Uh, again, thank you so much for um, lending me your time and teaching me more just about, I guess, life in general. Um, yeah. Well, it was great to meet you, Harmony. So you're in your final year? Oh uh, Yeah, I'm about to be. <laughs> okay, so that's a scary time. It is, yeah. Yeah, have you decided what where you're gonna apply to college? I mean, I guess I have a few uh, schools in mind. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's a little bit stressful, but I'll get yeah. over it. <laughs> yeah, well, good luck with all that. Thank you so and much. It's a pleasure to get to, to meet you. To you too. Thank you. All right, bye-bye. <laughs>